other thing I was fascinated with was the shadow. How do I go about choosing music? And is it brought to me? Does that mean you're a composer and you have a whole <laughs> packet for me? Which is fine. Um, how, well, I listen to, I love music. So, you know, I've been listening to music a lot for many, many years. And, you know, the official policy of my company was live music starting in like 96. But before that, it was almost always live music on, on, in shows anyway. So, you know, I'm involved daily with a heavy, heavy doses of music. And it is a delight and a frustration. And um, I know a lot of, well, over the, this time, I, I know a lot of musicians and I know a lot of composers and a lot of music and a lot of, uh, you know, I hear a lot of things. And so uh, the, the music I choose has to be able to under, uh, I have to be able to listen to it many, many hundreds or more times and to be able to study it and to think about it and not just be bored out of my mind like a lot of music can do that. You know, so I don't want it to really be st stupefying, the music. I try to have it be, there has to be some sort of catch, some hook, some sort of uh, stimul some sort of stimulation that's not just theoretical, but actually is, you know, you know sonic. You know, like that crazy tune in this last movement that you all have in your head, but you can't quite sing it because it's crazy? Because it's all the intervals are wrong. It's like, wow, and you're going to be singing that for a long time. So imagine that for like years at a time. Is it different choreographing for opera than a, a dance show like this? Well, I'll tell you, here's my order of priorities is as follows. Mark Morris Dance Group, occasional uh, commissions from ballet companies. I work with ballet companies around the world. And uh, staging and directing and choreographing operas. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're sort of branches of the same tree because it all comes from music by choice. I, you, know, you don't have to be a choreographer and a director and work from music, although wait, that sounds insane suddenly. Um, I choose to do that. So for me, it's sort of a natural extension of my sort of point of view and my ideas about music and action and storytelling and dr drama, dramaturgy and behavior. So, you know, I love that singers sing well and dancers dance well, and I sometimes let them explore a little bit of each other's territory, but really, people are specialists for a reason. Like, you don't want to hear me sing. However, if you insist, no, sorry. How did I learn about agriculture? Well, I grew up on a farm um, in the middle of one of those I, st the receipt that starts with an I, I forget what it was called. Um, Ivor Cutler, everyone knows Ivor Cutler now. Um, I saw a dance, I was in Scotland, I, I choreographed a dance for a little festival in Edinburgh and uh, another choreographer who I know set a dance to a few of the songs of Ivor Cutler. N only, one, only one of them I used, I think. Oh, no, maybe two. Cockadoodle Don't, the, the curtain call, the, you know, the 11 o'clock number. And also, um, I'm going in a field, that very, very strange, very, very beautiful set. But, you know, I, th I think all these songs are tremendously poignant and sad. Um, they're surprising and funny, but they're really, the core of them is really very, I think, sad. That's the word, sad. Look him up, it's interesting. He was a Glaswegian Jew who taught music in uh, children's, uh, taught children music, was, uh, uh, was in the uh, Air Force for like a day, but he couldn't, he couldn't handle it because he was a pacifist and a very, very bright, very interesting man, um, not known that well. And when I first did that, when I first did this piece, I was concerned that people wouldn't understand the, the, his, you know, uh, his Glaswegian accent. Um, so that's one reason it starts with speaking, because I wanted people to get used to hearing it before they were watching. And pretty much everybody has it right away. It's kind of great. His music is known by people my age who are Scottish and English and not all of them. But it's worth looking up. He's really quite wonderful. That's why I use a recording, because it can't be replicated. I know I violate my own rules, but what are they for anyway? When do I, when do I decide, decide it's finished? Well, first of all, I'm very, um, very disciplined. And I know when something's going to premiere. We set a date for opening night, and it 
I kind of want it to be done by then. <laughs> and so, but sometimes I'm finished early, sometimes I'm just finishing it up at the last second. I know when it's done, not when the music runs out, you know, because you can always fade out. You know, if you work with recorded music, you just like fade it out and close the curtains like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I use music intact. Uh, I, let's, that's, that's a really good question. I, I know when, when I start just fooling around with it and changing everything all the time that I'm done. That means I've seen it too many times and I'm, you know, the, the first idea, often a very good one. Um, you know, I throw away a lot of material. I make up stuff and throw it away and revise it and change it. And then, it's, I don't know, it's, you, you know when it's done. You know, it's like putting the toothpick in and it comes out clean. Do I, is my favorite dance film? Well, of course it's The Red Shoes because there's no better film. Revisit, everybody revisit what you're making fun of in your mind, which is, what's that called? The, uh, the Turning Point. If you see, if you watch that again, you will go crazy at how good it is. It is fabulous. It's a fabulous, fabulous movie. Um, dance movie. I love, you know what? I love that everybody hated, all, the ballet industry was all up in arms. Like, how dare you? How dare you uh, portray our jobs in the, this form, which is called Black Swan? I thought it was fabulous. I loved it. It was, that, it was the same as that Mickey Rourke movie that he did, only it was a ballet dancer instead of a, of a, of a wrestler. Of a, you know, it wasn't about ballet. It wasn't an expose of ballet. It was a movie, everybody. Lighten up. And I did, it wasn't a masterpiece, but I really kind of liked it. I thought it was kind of fabulous. Um, there's a dance scene in this movie called Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. There's a very beautiful dance in that. Wonderful dance. Alan Cumming in his best role to date. Uh, what other thing? I love every Busby Berkeley musical, every single one, and I own them and I worship them. He was a great, great director and choreographer. Um, I think that's kind of it. And oh, the thing in Blake's Barn, those, uh, I, was, I was singing uh, Norton Owen's praises earlier at an, at a, an event uh, because Norton, the genius, genius archivist and everything here, assembled this spectacular show of uh, you know, exhibit of dance movie posters. It's so shocking. Just the color makes you lose your mind. And everyone is so beautiful and so clever and so fabulous. See that. If you, come, if you missed it, come back just for that because it it's sensational. How do I transmit my ideas for a dance to the dancers? I, in any way I need. When I'm choreographing a dance, I've studied the score, I've listened to the music a lot, I've thought about it, I've done no preparation aside from that, I think, I think. And then I come into the studio and since I have a full-time company that works all the time and has health benefits and has a place to work, with it has hot water, and yeah, they're not paid enough money, but a lot of people aren't. Um, anyway, to transmit, here's what I do. I make up stuff, I show stuff, and everybody learns, if I'm gonna make up a solo, everyone learns it, usually. I, I very often work with everybody and then I decide what's gonna happen with the piece. So I make up some moves and I do them, and then I say, reverse that, uh, you know, do that half time, face the other way, get rid of all of that, don't do the arms, or, you know, I want this to be like the ocean, or I want this to have no rhythm, or I want, this to suddenly turn cold or sad. And I use those, I speak, and I show things, and I use images, and I go from the music to find how to do stuff, and then I just, I really make it up. And the dancers who are so incredibly expert at learning and retaining and maintaining and passing on and freshening what they do every night and teaching it to other people, it's an amazing dance. is one of the very few uh, places in the world where there is still this incredibly profound oral tradition, that it's really person to person and generation to generation. A, a related question, which you didn't ask, but I'm gonna ask it, which is, do you decide, do you choreograph every move that everyone does all the time, or is it completely improvised? And the answer is, there's no answer to that. So, of course, I choreograph absolutely specifically to every single person who works for me at any time. Always. Every single one. That happens when I work for San Francisco Ballet. I go in with music and having studied it, and I know them quite well, but, and I cast it, and I make up a dance with those people. You can't make up a dance that people can't do. Then when you come into the company, if you join a company, of course, you have to learn other people's parts to go in when people age out or whatever. Um, 
And so you learn it, you learn someone else's role, but that's like anything else. That's learning a piece of music or learning a part in a play where you're doing that part. It's not about self-expression, it's about expression. Mm -hmm.